Welcome back guys. In this video we're going to basically check which units are inside our screen space so which units we can see on the screen and the reason we do that is because A it saves overhead in unity and then we can just say well let's go through each of the units on the screen and see if they're in the box that's a lot simpler and a lot less in, um, processor intensive than saying let's go through every single unit in the whole level and see if it's in the box or not alright so to check if the units in the box we're not going to use raycasts we're not going to use colliders or anything like that we're just going to see if the units 2d space is inside the uh, the drag box 2d space okay guys simplest way of doing it so by the end of this video we'll we'll be able to count how many units are on the screen okay but going back to our script we did in the previous video to check the box start and the box finish um, we can optimize this quite a lot so I've uh, created a new helper function and it just converts what well, was going to be a float to a boolean so I'm just going to change this to a float. I originally done int, but this is going to be a float now because we pass in the box width and the height, which is a float. Okay, it takes a float, and if the float's ne uh, negative, it returns false. If it's a positive, it returns true. All right, guys, um, and we can say float to boolean. So if we have this function, we can just say up here. Well, we've got our uh, variables here and now we can w work out the box start and finish and uh, we only want to do this if the user is dragging by the way so if user is dragging then do all this and so we don't want unity to do any of this any of this stuff <laughs> if we're not dragging at all so um, okay using the function we just created we can say if um, what did I call it again float to boolean the box width so if the box width is greater than zero, it's the same thing. We can then say, well, okay, if the box height is also greater than zero, then we can check what happens if it's greater and greater. The box will be at the bottom left. So copy and paste this. All right, else if the width is, is greater than zero and now the height is less than zero, so greater than, less than, that's that one box start is at the top left so okay so then we can say else if uh, it's false this time so floats to boolean box width okay so if it's false and uh, it, we can check again is the uh, floats to boolean box height so now the width is less than zero and the height is greater than zero less than greater than is the bottom one bottom right okay else negative and negative so that one's the top right okay guys copy and paste else box start is that okay so we've just shrunk all this code down into this basically okay so I guess it's simpler to look at we don't have to scroll as much and um, optimizes things out so the previous video I went through what we just we basically explained how the system worked once we have a solid understanding of how something works we can simplify it in code okay guys so I'm just gonna delete all this because we don't need it anymore and we need to put all this stuff within the user is dragging otherwise we don't need it okay actually let's debug it out let's test and see if it works because we don't want to continue if this doesn't work and Okay, so like we did in the previous video, just check test a point, 421, that's cool, and again, 421. I'm talking about the box width X, okay guys, so no matter where we drag, the box width is going to be the same. Or the box start and the box finish. Okay, so that just simplifies this, and uh, now we can move on. So, like I said, we're going to test which units are in the screen space, and to do that, I just want to de declare a couple more variables at the top of the script. So public, static, array list again, and we're going to say units on screen equals new array list. So we're going to track which game objects, which are units, are on the screen. All right, guys, and uh, I'm just going to define a couple more. We're going to use in the next video. Array list units in the drag. So self-explanatory, just storing which units are going to be in the drag. So this is going to update every frame of game object. Okay, and one more public or is it be private? Um, I think it best to be private. Private boolean. Did we finish the drag in this frame? So finish drag 
on this frame. All right, so we we can just test. Yep, yeah, if the user did finish the drag on this frame, then we can go ahead and check what's in the drag, and then add them to the currently selected units. Okay, that's going to be in the next video as well. All right, guys. So to get this um, checking if the units are on screen working, I'm going to define a couple more functions down here. The first one is going to say check if a unit is within the screen space to to just say deal with mouse drag selecting. We only want to use this for selecting the mouse, so we can say uh, public static boolean true or false unit within screen space. All right, checking if the unit's in the screen space or not. Vector two. We're going to bring in the unit screen position. So before we um, use this function, we're going to convert the unit's 3D space to the 2D space, the 2D screen space, and then bring it into this function. Okay, guys. And um, we say if return true, else return false. Just get the template out of the way. And then say if the unit screen position dot x is less than less than the screen width okay and the unit screen position is also dot y sorry is less than screen height so we're just checking is it over the screen or um, over the screen height or over the screen width okay and uh, if it's not that's great if it is then return false and then we can say if unit position screen pause dot x this time is greater than zero that's also great and uh, screen units screen position dot y is also greater than zero that's also great okay so that's it really we're checking is the unit over the screen or is it under the screen if it is return false if it's not return true alright guys and that's as simple as that function gets you need one more function which is going to be let's remove a unit from the screen space so like uh, this one's going to be units on screen array list. Let's remove it from the array list. It's no longer on the screen. So public static void is not going to return anything. Remove it from. Let's say remove from on screen units. All right. Again, it's going to bring in something. This time it's a game object it's called unit, and we're going to loop through them. So for int i equals zero i is less than units on screen dot count i plus plus so then we say we want to get the game objects from the array list so game object unit object equals units on screen at this current index as a game object pretty much what we did in the other one the selected units one so if the unit is the unit object so if we found it okay we want to say units on screen remove at the index and then we're going to return we don't need to loop through anymore because we've already found it and if we've come to the end of this for loop and we haven't found it return false or we'll just return actually because it's a void we're not going to return anything okay and that's all we need so we just to recap we check if the units in the screen space and this one removes the unit from the on screen units array list okay guys so but where are we going to use these functions well instead of using the mouse scripts to check all the units to see if they're on the screen the units themselves are going to tell the mouse if they're on the screen and we've got a passing error somewhere okay didn't close that off that's fine so to do that we need uh, another script and we're going to call it unit and we're going to attach this to all of our units in the game so create C sharp I'm going to call this unit and it's a generic unit script okay guys so we're not going to use this to I don't know to make the player walk or to deal with its hit points or the health or anything it's just going to be for every single unit in the game so the selection of it okay very very generic uh, class so this class is going to so we can say this script should be attached to all the controllable units in the game whether they are walkable or not so whether they're buildings buildings can't walk or move in the game or units like characters they can walk in the game so the script should be on all of them alright guys so 
we're branching out into other scripts now which is all good and uh, this uh, script is going to store some variables for the our mouse script so we can say for mouse this is going to be for the mouse and let's say dot cs so we know which script it's for public vector 2 this one's going to be called the, called the screen position so we're going to store this is this unit screen position we're going to store whether it's on screen or not and the last one public boolean selected equals false because when the unit first be, is created we have not selected it but wait a minute we've checked if the unit selected by referring to its selected projector we've done that a few videos ago so why do we need this as well well we need this variable for the script for, to start with and also we can replace the check on the projector so instead of looking uh, for the children of the game object and then finding the selected and seeing if it's active or not we can actually see we can actually refer to this value in the script and say is that selected or not boolean true or false so it will save overhead and it will be a lot simpler so I'll do that in the next couple of videos actually so when we come to optimizing this script I'll do that alright guys so moving on void updates let's tell the mouse script if we're on the screen so so uh, if the unit is not selected get screen space okay we only want to do this if the unit is actually not selected if it is selected we don't need to know anything because we've already selected it so say if it's not selected so let's close this now and tidy things up a little bit okay so we're doing everything if the unit is not selected okay guys so the first thing we need to do is track the screen position because we don't know where it is in 2D space so screen position equals camera main same function we used for the hit point so world to screens point this transform position bringing in position get in the screen space okay if it's within the screen space screen space we can say if we're going to refer to that function we use so if mouse unit within screen space this no not this game object is a vector 2 wasn't it so the screen position which we just worked out okay so if it's in the screen space and not already added so if it's not already added to the units on screen add it okay simple as that so if on screen if it's not on the screen mouse units on screen dot add this game object okay guys and then we can say on screen equals true it's now on it's now on the screen simple as that okay so close this off all right so we checked if the unit is within screen space what if it's not in screen play screen space so unit is not in screen space else and we all we need to check here it's really simple we need to remove the uh, object if it was previously on the screen so the previous but the previous frame ran yep the unit was on the screen but it's moved since then now on this frame the unit's off the screen and we need to remove it on the off from the, the screen units okay so if on screen okay because all this stuff only happens if the unit's not is if it's not selected okay like I said so if it was on screen mouse remove from the screen units this game object alright guys and it's simple as that okay so uh, there's one more thing we need to do we need to say on screen equals false here but do we need to do that really we can do it in the remove from units script and I'm going to show you how to do that now so remove from units alright so we remove it from the units on screen so we need to refer to this script alright so we say units object sorry guys get component all right, and we're getting the units component, so unit the script, okay, and then we say dot on screen equals false. Simple as that. And I thought I made an error because Mono developed it and helped me, but it looks okay to me. So referring to the game object, getting the script, which is called unit. These um, these little brackets are a generic component on in the in the on the object, so the unit script. All right, that's kind of a function on screen equals false once we've got the unit script let's access the public variable on screen and set it to false okay guys simple as that actually so we don't need to say on screen equals false here as well alright so this is the unit script okay so uh, the last thing I want to do in this video is 
debug out the units on the screen and I'm going to do that in late update so after all of our update stuff's finished from the unit and the mouse we can go to late update and then we can say debug log um, units on screen count alright guys but firstly we need to add the unit script and the unit subject doesn't exist in the current context let's go back Units on move out, units sorry guys, unit object. Okay. So anyway, where were we? And uh Okay, so go to our prefab, find our character or our unit called character, and let's just drag on the unit script on there because we need to use the unit script for every unit in the game. And let's test this out, shall we? See if it works. So okay, there's one unit on the screen at the moment. Let's drag off the screen zero units okay that's working pretty good so in the next video we can just refer to the units that are on the screen and then check if they're in the drag if they are we can select them if not you know don't select them um, and that's where our scripts will come to an end then we can optimize it and stuff so uh, a lot more effective than using colliders and raycasts and checking if the raycast at every point and stuff in the drag no that's not the way to do things guys <laughs> okay make things as simple as possible and uh, stuff like that. So thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video.